right, welcome to Synthesis Workshop. Today we're going to be discussing the Hoffman rearrangement, one of my favorite reactions for making carbon-nitrogen bonds. Um, today is a named reaction episode, which means that we are going to be focusing on a single reaction. We'll be going through the mechanism, and then we'll look at some applications. The Hoffman rearrangement is very useful for converting amides into isocyanates through a number of different conditions. The isocyanate can then be converted either into a deprotected amine, a urea, or a carbamate. The types of conditions that are available um, to do this transformation were traditionally sodium hyperbromite um, or hypochlorite with strong base in the presence of heat. There's also oxidative conditions that are available, as well as electrochemical conditions. The mechanism of the Hoffman rearrangement requires the formation of an inhalo amide, which can then rearrange into the isocyanate that we are going after. To start the mechanism, we'll go ahead and redraw the amide once again, and we'll show how when you treat that with a base, then we can deprotonate the amide to form this type of oxyanionic intermediate, which can then interact with an electrophilic bromine source to form the inhalo amide. And at that point, we can deprotonate once more to form this deprotonated nitrogen species, which can then rearrange by a bridged anionic transition state in order to form the isocyanate product. Once we've formed our isocyanate, then we can react with a range of nucleophiles, either alcohols, amines, or hydroxide anions, depending on what our ultimate goal is. Okay, so now that we're familiar with the mechanism of this transformation, let's talk about some of the synthetic applications that different groups have used this reaction for. This is an example from the Romo group, who synthesized the natural product dibromofacalstatin using this reaction. So starting from this carboxamide, the Romo group showed that it was possible to use a hypervalent iodine source to trigger a Hoffman rearrangement. And that allowed the synthesis of this isocyanate intermediate. And the virtue of that intermediate is that it had a protected amine right next door, which was ready to behave as a nucleophile in a ring closing reaction that resulted in the formation of a urea. And importantly, the stereochemistry of that um, carbon that we've marked in red was retained through this transformation, which is a very useful and important aspect of the Hoffman rearrangement. After having accessed that urea, they were then able to carry that on to form dibromofacalstatin in just a couple steps using a late stage dibromination protocol. So finally, using the Hoffman rearrangement, they were able to set up the really challenging nitrogen-containing stereocenters in this natural product. In another example by the Kahn group, starting from another hindered carboxamide, they were able to convert this starting material into an isocyanate intermediate and then tie that up into a cyclic carbamate. The isocyanate intermediate generated by the first step of this reaction was able to be trapped by a pendant primary alcohol as a nucleophile, uh, which resulted in the formation of the five-membered ring shown in the product. The stereochemistry was once again preserved, and they were able to use that stereocenter um, in the intermediate that they obtained, which they carried on to the final target, Miriosin. And there, that stereochemical array was only uh, accessible with the help of the Hoffman rearrangement. One final example that we'll look at comes from the Sarpong group who in their synthesis of citrinolin B and cyclopiamine B, um, which was published in Nature in 2014, they employed another hypervalent iodine reagent in order to convert this uh, hindered carboxamide into a methyl carbamate. Um, once again, this is going through the isocyanate intermediate here, and the stereochemistry is going to be preserved once again. And using that, they were able to install the nitrogen at that key position, which they later converted to a nitro group in both of these natural products. All right, thank you for watching. We'll try and keep producing new free videos about synthetic organic chemistry on a regular basis, and we'll try and keep them coming about specific reactions, total syntheses, and more. Please send any questions or comments you have to us by email at syntheticsworkshopvideos at gmail.com. Uh, if you like the video, please follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you next time.